Well, good morning again. Happy Thursday morning to you. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is what I call my morning musings. Always glad to uh, share these few moments with you. Hey, look, I, I just want you to know how much I appreciate all of the private messages, the emails that I receive from, from you uh, in expressing your appreciation for morning musings. You know, <laughs> some of you tell me of just... My day's not complete without a morning music. Well, we, we truly appreciate that. It's very humbling. We're honored by that. Uh, let me reiterate something. Uh, here we are at the last of the year. I've been asking you to consider this. And as you know, I don't appeal for funds very, very often. I don't like to do that. But if our ministry is a blessing to you, would you consider supporting us? As I have shared with you, there are absolutely fantastic things happening all around the world. Things that Preterist Research Institute needs to be able to participate in, uh, to help with, and we need your help to do that. If you've been thinking about it, and I know some of you have, <laughs> uh, it, any kind of contribution, any kind of a gift would be greatly appreciated, especially here at the end of the year, as we set up our plans for this upcoming year. So give that some thought. Okay. We're talking about the Messianic Temple. I've shared with you, you're undoubtedly aware of the fact that we are told constantly, you know, John Hagee tells us over and over and over and over again that the Messianic Temple will be built very, very soon. You know, he predicted that the rapture would be in 1999. I heard him say it with my own ears. I watched the show in which he said it. Uh, his prediction about the four blood moons, hey, two of them are already passed. And that world-changing event, that something major hasn't happened. And by the way, part of all that scenario, okay, must of necessity include the temple. Has it happened? Has not happened and it will not happen. Well, I've been sharing with you a few thoughts relative to, to a couple major Old Testament prophecies that foretold the Messianic temple. Isaiah chapter 8, Isaiah chapter 28, Psalms 118. Now, I, I've had brief comments, but I want to summarize it. And this is somewhat repetitious, but repetition is good because it's so critical. What I want us to see is how Peter, by inspiration, interpreted those Old Testament texts. Keeping in mind, our dispensational friends tell us the Old Testament never predicted the church, never predicted the church as the temple of God, never predicted the church as the fulfillment of any Old Testament prophecy concerning the temple. Now, here's what's critical to understand. In 1 Peter chapter 1, Peter talks about the salvation that was to come at the coming of the Lord. That salvation was foretold by the Old Testament prophets. Now notice what he said. Those Old Testament prophets longed to understand the things they foretold. But Peter says it was revealed to them that they did not minister those things to themselves. They did not understand what it was they were predicting. Oh, wait a minute. If they knew what the temple was and they were predicting the temple, yet Peter says they did not understand what they were saying, you know, we got to deal with that. So here is Peter saying the Old Testament prophets did not fully grasp what it was they were predicting. They longed to know the time and the manner of the things that they were predicting, but it was revealed to them that they were not dealing with things for, the, for their time. But Peter said those things have now been revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. So Peter, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is telling us that he is giving us the divine interpretation of the Old Testament prophecies concerning the things that would come in the last days at the coming of the Lord. What does he tell us? Well, he quotes three Old Testament prophecies concerning the kingdom, concerning the Messianic temple. He quotes 
from Psalms, excuse me, Isaiah 28, Isaiah 8, Psalms 118. How does he apply that? He applies those verses. He interprets those verses as a reference to the church as the temple of God. He applies those prophecies to Jesus as the chief cornerstone of that messianic temple. Jesus is the living cornerstone. They, as living people, were living stones being built on that chief cornerstone. Now, folks, if Peter, through inspiration, interpreted the Old Testament prophecies of the Messianic temple, if he interpreted those prophecies spiritually of the body of Christ, then you and I today have absolutely no authority for rejecting Peter's inspiration, inspired interpretation and saying, oh, well, we're actually still looking for the literal fulfillment of those prophecies. Peter and the apostles are the final word. Look, I've been sharing with you, I, I produced a sermon. This is one powerful, powerful lesson. It is an examination of every single Old Covenant prophecy of the rejected stone, the rejected chief cornerstone of the Messianic temple. And it's not only an examination of those prophecies and how Paul used those prophecies, how Jesus applied those prophecies, how Peter applied those prophecies, it's also an application of those interpretations to the interpretation of 2 Peter chapter 3 and the great day of the Lord. You won't find this material anywhere else. I'm offering this for a gift of $25 or more. I'll send this to you free, no problem whatsoever. Go to my website, send me an email, or go to PayPal, send me $25. Say, Don, I want to order Romancing the Stone. I'm telling you, this is powerful. It's exciting. It's thrilling. It's comforting. It tells us that the temple of God is the church of the living God. It tells us we dwell in him, with him, and he in us. Wow. Hey, thanks for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. You have a fantastic weekend, Lord willing. We'll see you on Monday.